Hey everyone, this is Bill. Welcome back to the channel. We're focusing on stock market investing today. We appreciate you taking time to join us. Man, this has been a very tough market out here of late. There are significant geopolitical issues unfolding which are causing a great deal of uncertainty, but most importantly, inflation is running out of control and the Federal Reserve is poised to embark on a series of interest rate hikes. Neither of these two items are bullish for the overall market and investors have seen the aftermath in recent weeks. I have been trying to weave my way through this period, but as a long-term investor, it is not my inclination to ramp up some selling in response to these events. Now, due to, some, due to needing some of my stock money for a real estate transaction, unfortunately, I did have to sell some stocks at levels that were not of my liking right here in this period. The timing was just really bad, so it was painful. But on Friday, I felt some pain in a different way as three stocks I hold were taken to the woodshed. First, I own shares of Astra, which trades under the symbol ASTR on the NASDAQ. This is a company that is in the space game, bringing payloads to space. The company states, quote, Improving life on Earth from space starts with getting your satellites to your desired orbit on schedule. We are now contracting dedicated launch services for payloads into low Earth orbit, end quote. The company has talented and experienced leadership, led by Chris Kemp, who previously worked with NASA. Space is indeed the final frontier. So I'm trying to position myself to be well represented in this emerging space, and I have some minimal investments in a handful of these types of companies, and Astra is one of them. But after their second failed launch this week, the Astra stock fell 15% to an all-time low. Obviously, this is not what was on the drawing board for the company, and it seems like the immediate future is going to be rough. And looking at the chart, there's nothing good to see here for a bag holder like myself. There's plenty of work to be done just to get back to the prior base range of around $9 per share. A successful launch would go a long way in this regard, but overall my thesis on the company for the future has not changed, so perhaps when I see the stock beginning to turn higher, I can buy some more to reduce my cost basis. Another stock I own that got absolutely hammered Friday is Enveric Biosciences. I did a video on this company as part of a series of stocks that had association with the cannabis industry which was seemingly poised to emerge. Enveric works with natural compounds, many derived from cannabis, to help with cancer treatments. The company states, quote, their mission is to improve the characteristics of psychedelic and cannabinoid-derived pharmaceuticals by unlocking their full potential to create treatment solutions for a variety of indications with serious unmet medical needs, end quote. I did a follow-up video on Enveric as well, which I considered to be a speculative stock. The stock was showing some positive price action for a while, but in late November the stock lost footing and began to break down. My investment was minimal, and with the environment the company works in considered emerging, I was not worried about the long-term potential I originally envisioned. On Friday, the Florida-based company announced, quote, the pricing of its previously announced underwritten public offering of 20 million shares of its common stock and warrants to purchase up to 20 million shares of its common stock. End quote. Well, the market did not take kindly to this press release one little bit, and Enveric Biosciences stock crashed, dropping 50% on heavy volume. Nothing like carrying a bunch of bags to happy hour on Friday after this debacle. Well, I do continue to like the arena the company engages in, and their potential to be successful in it, but it's going to be a long road back for this stock to get to prior levels. With all speculative stocks, I use disposable income, so it's not the end of the world here with my minimal investment. So I will watch moving forward and perhaps make an attempt to make some additional investments in the stock once the price action dictates. Now I'm a big NASCAR fan, and it's almost time to head over to the high banks to catch the running of the great American race, the Daytona 500. This is a tremendous sporting event, a real spectacle indeed. All of the cars over on the high banks will be running on specifically designed Goodyear Racing Eagles, and the Goodyear Blimp will be overhead bringing the world the awesome television coverage for Fox Sports. You might think this would be great exposure for the company, perhaps boosting its stock price. But on Friday, Goodyear, which trades under the new symbol GT in the New York Stock Exchange, fell an astonishing 27%. This is most unusual for a company like this, but the street hated what the company projected following their earnings release. 
The company noted inflationary pressures continue to work against what was generally considered to be a pretty strong quarter. I have various family members that have and continue to currently work for Goodyear Company, and I have been a longtime shareholder. For decades, I have been minimally dollar-cost averaging monthly into the stock, but over the years, I've accumulated a good deal of shares. Needless to say, this was not pretty, but they do serve beer at Daytona. So I got crushed Friday on these three stocks I hold, Astra, Enveric Biosciences, and Goodyear. You cannot win every day, so I take these opportunities to continue to learn as I seek to better construct my portfolio. Amongst the carnage, I did have a winner on Friday in IONQ, a computer hardware company I hold, which was up 13%, so we'll take that. I hope you are faring well in this market bloodbath without too many major losses. This period will not last, and I'm taking this time to minimally increase investments in companies I have the most conviction in. I'm also trying to work on my portfolio construction, which includes increasing positions in some of these speculative stocks that have potential to be big winners. So how are you making out in this environment? Drop us some comments. Let us know about any bags you might be holding or maybe some big winners that you got. Well, please, please feel welcome to follow us on Facebook over at Future Breakout. Well, folks, enjoy the Super Bowl. Thank you so much for watching. Happy trading, and we'll see you next time.